Okay, so it is our turn again for Married at First Sight in Nashville. And yeah, we got to talk about it. So the Nashville newlyweds plan housewarming parties. The guest list spark controversy for one couple. Others get grilled by their guests during their parties. Another couple reveal that they've crossed the threshold into sex while another reconsiders their divorce. Welcome back to Romance Review TV. It's Lady T. I got another recap for you guys. Married at First Sight, Nashville, Season 16, Episode 9, Partying Ways. And without any further ado, let's unpack this episode. So it is so crazy that so many couples are struggling this early. Even the ones that seem to be okay are having their own doubts. And it raises the question, are any of these couples going to stay married? And by the look of things, I know we probably are not so sure. But you know what? Let's start by talking about Christopher and Nicole. So with Chris and Nicole, Nicole goes to lunch with her friend Julianne to discuss new married life. Now, although things have been pretty easy so far, she kind of finds herself waiting for things to go downhill. She's waiting for the shoe to drop, which is not good at all. And she even admits that despite her best efforts, she can't help but overthink the whole situation. And I mean, as much as we probably want to say that, you know, we think that she's just being a little bit over the top. You know, as most of us are, as we've always watched every season, something is bound to always happen. I mean, seriously, is it that bad that we're waiting for the shoe to drop? I'm just looking for the love, but I know most folks are wondering what's going to happen next. And it's only going to be a matter of time before something changes, as they gave us a preview to next week's episode with these two. Now, we fast forward to the housewarming where we see Nicole friends pull Chris aside to make sure that his wife personally personality isn't a little bit too much for him and they encourage him to continue to be nice but not to become a pushover and apparently Nicole likes a man who can call her out when it's necessary yeah I don't know if Chris is quite up for that as a task now while talking to Chris's friends Nicole acknowledges her very strong personality but she wants him to speak up as well as he should so next up is Clint and Gina. Not too much this week with these two, but Clint meets with one of his married friends to get some advice on his relationship. And his friend makes a great point that the experiment doesn't allow them to build a low stressed environment. And I've been saying that for the longest. Now he also notices that Clint is being really careful about he com how he communicates his feelings. And after everything that happened at that honeymoon, I'm sure he has learned his lesson from the last time. Later, we got to see Gina finally decide to move into their shared apartment. Now, before anyone get a little bit too excited, they're going to be in separate bedrooms. But I guess that still counts for something, some little form of progress. Because just last week, Gina wasn't budging on her decision not to move in, especially even after talking to Pastor Cal. But however, this week now, they're living together. Next up, we have to talk about Eris and Jasmine. And Eris meets with his very opinionated cousin, none other than the infamous Felina, that warned him that he wasn't ready to get married. Now, he revealed that he isn't attracted to his wife, but he believes that she would have his back. And even in a post interview, the cousin admits that she thinks Jasmine is fake. And she also declined attending their housewarming because she doesn't feel the need to invest her time into anything that isn't going anywhere. Girl, just go home. But before she leaves, she suggests that he should have sex with Jasmine and work on their intimacy. And I got to disagree. If you're not there yet, just don't do it just because. That's exactly what's happening to Sandy and Dan on Married at First Sight Australia. They are not attracted to each other, however. They just had sex with each other this past week. Anyway, having sex, like I said, would only send mixed signals. And of course, his wife has admitted that she falls in love a little too easily. So I don't think we need to complicate the situation, Felina. And as for their housewarming party, Jasmine and Eris disagree about their guest list. I mean, she doesn't want to entertain Eris's cousin, Felina. And of course, we already just said, 
Felina doesn't want to be there. Jasmine, of course, is still offended that she was called disingenuous and fake. However, unbeknownst to her, like I said before, Felina don't even want to be around her either. And I guess Eris didn't take their beef seriously because he invited his cousin earlier that day. Now, the sparks definitely continue to fly if she's going to show up at the last minute. Now, during the party, Eris and Jasmine voice some of the problems that they've encountered. When he speaks to her family alone, he tells them that he would be excited if she gave up three of her four dogs. Now, meanwhile, Jasmine voices concern about their lack of a sex life with his male friends. And I know we were definitely not expecting her to say all of that, but I guess it wouldn't hurt to have a man's opinion. All right, so our next couple, which we don't really have too much in this episode about, is Shaquille and Kirsten. Now, Shaq and Kirsten decided to invite two married couples, which is important in their lives, to come to their housewarming party. And uh, you know what? It's a good idea because these two could definitely use some advice. Very quickly, the topic turned to their sex and intimacy. And considering that Kirsten is still using the excuse that she's not a good kisser to avoid kissing her husband, things got a little bit awkward. Her cousins give Shaq some great advice. Meanwhile, his friends speak to Kirsten and share some of their insights about growing into attraction and eventually love. And as much as I'm hoping for that to happen... On Kirsten's end, I just don't see that happening. It's not because Shaq isn't a great guy. And finally, McKinley and Dominique. And pretty much Dominique is not only over McKinley, but she's pretty much over the show at this point. Remember that whole visit with Pastor Cal where she informs McKinley that she wants to get a divorce? This is where her age is beginning to show. And I know that her husband wasn't everything she expected, but I think she gave up much too quickly. Why go through the hassle of marrying a stranger only to give up in a few weeks when you only had to make an effort for two months? Although she is apologetic, you know, McKinley can't help but feel embarrassed as he watches his wife walk out the door. And you know what? That's why her mom should have never signed her up for this, even though she did have a discussion with her mom about the state of the marriage. Her mom is trying to tell her, you know what? Give it a little bit more time. She gently tries to get her to see where she could have gone wrong, but it didn't work. She doesn't see that. And of course, we got to talk about this whole potluck as they break the news to the other couples. I don't uh, fully agree with that. I was 100% blindsided that you asked for a divorce. I, I had faith in the process, and that's not what wore me down. It was more like the belittling that started on the honeymoon that wore me down mentally, emotionally. You know, I'm, I'm, who knows I have faults, and these are things I want to work on every year and grow and be a better human in general. Um, and I, I'm not saying that you think you're perfect or anything. There's been no compromise, though. I've just, it's just been me compromising. You know, I got to say, I'm glad they kind of changed this up. We first saw that happen in season 14. If, if it's been further back in one of the previous seasons, let me know down in the comment section. With the whole thing with Chris and Alyssa, where they were able to leave the experiment early and I guess only show up for certain filming excerpts toward the end of the season. But they're not pushing people to stay together when they don't really want to be there because obviously it's been affecting the mental health of some of past cast members. So I got to admit to the fact that I'm glad that they're allowing folks to end it if they know that it's going to be a detriment and both parties want out. So I got to say that. But obviously, it seemed like McKinley wanted to stick around and see the process through. However, McKin I mean, Dominique did not. And again, that's why people that are truly interested need to sign up for themselves and not have somebody else, especially like your mom, sign you up for a process that you probably truly don't want to be in. 
Okay, so let's get the conversation started down in the comment section. What do you think about our couple so far and this whole situation that Dominique and McKinley had? Look like they are officially over. Even though she was peer pressured into going back, she still ended up out the door because he don't want friends. He wants a wife. So let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this recap. Stay tuned for other recaps on this channel. And until the next video, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.